fixed second delay behind what is actually happening, but it'll give you a good idea of the kind of speed that the shuttle is dealing with as it launches off this pad, pad 39B here at the Kennedy Space Center. We are four minutes away from launch right now, and just to give you an idea of what is going on right now, in just a few moments, we're going to be watching as the shuttle goes through a pre-programmed test of the flight control systems. Drain back. That's the voice of Lisa Malone of NASA, who is sitting in the launch control center, counting. just a few hundred yards from where I sit. Final purge of the main engines is now starting. The main engine valves are being opened and being prepared for start. She's referring to valves which carry the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in that huge external tank, 500,000 gallons of it. Surfaces has started. The orbiter flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. And the three main en engines will be gimbaled and positioned for launch. And when we say gimbal, you'll see those cones eventually moving around into various places to make sure they're moving freely. Once that is completed, they will be left in the position. All systems are go for launch at this time. You see them moving right now. The 26th flight of the shuttle Columbia with a crew of five. It's the 95th flight of the space shuttle program, which began in 1981 with Columbia, April of 1981 to be exact. But the first with a female as commander. Three minutes and counting. At this juncture, the shuttle is now on its internal power. The ground power is disconnected. A significant milestone as we mark toward a launch of the space shuttle. The liquid oxygen tank is being pressurized for flight. Another significant moment. The gaseous oxygen bit hood retraction is now beginning. You're looking now at a close up at the top of the shuttle's yeah, external yeah. tank. That hood receives gases, liquid oxygen, as they vent off from that shuttle's external tank. It is there to ensure that ice does not form all over that external tank. That uh, vent hood, as you can see there, has two vacuum tunnels there which suck in the oxygen as it boils off. And as you see it pivot out of the way. A few days delayed, but same enthusiastic launch team wishing Columbia's crew success on your mission. One minute. We've got our visors and our O2. Thanks for all the great work, and we'll see you in five days. Commander Eileen Collins, obviously ready to go. This, this mission has been delayed by almost a year now. Problems with the payload, primarily. The Chandra oh, X-ray telescope. Columbia continuing to look very clean. 90 seconds away from launch. Difficulties with the payload itself Changers as well. The of NASA series of great observatories following the Hubble Space Telescope and the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. Also some problems with the booster motor, which is designed to put it in as much higher orbit than the space shuttle. Liquid hydrogen tank being pressurized for flight. 500,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen inside that burnt orange external tank, feeding those three main engines, which you see on a close-up there. One minute and counting. The two white Columbia solid... Will be launched on an easterly trajectory on a 28.45 degrees inclination to the equator. There's two white solid rocket boosters to the seconds. side there. Do most of the work getting the space shuttle into orbit. The it's orange the tank feeding those main engines. T-minus 35 seconds. T-minus 30 seconds. 25 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have a go for engine start. Zero. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia, reaching new heights for women in X ray astronomy. Columbia is in the roll. We've got a fuel cell pH number one. Roger roll, Columbia. We're looking at.
Columbia, Houston, we'd like AC bus sensors off. We're evaluating the fuel cell. Columbia. Okay, that's complete, Scooter. Roger that, Columbia. Looks like we had a transient on AC-1. Columbia is now headed downrange, altitude 3.8 3 uh, miles. And as we hear, uh, all systems uh, okay. It looks like a sensor on board. Three engines throttling down, all at 67%. Columbia, Houston, we are critical to AC-2 on the center engine. AC-3 on the right. We've lost DCU-A on the center and DCU-B on the right. Copy that. And Columbia, Houston, you are go at throttle up. Columbia, go at throttle up. And all three engines are back at uh, full throttle. Columbia is now eight miles downrange, altitude 14 miles. The flight control team is uh, monitoring the electrical systems on board. Again, all three fuel cells appear to be healthy, as do the hydraulic systems. We're approaching one minute, 50 seconds into the flight, standing by for burnout and separation of the solid rocket uh, boosters on the orbiter. Columbia now uh, has burned uh, more than two million pounds of fuel and weighs half of what it did at launch. SRB separation is confirmed. You're listening to the voice of Kyle Herring, emission control. Performance nominal. Performance nominal. Now that report, the performance thus far in the launch phase has been as expected. Again, the uh, electrical uh, systems officer here in mission control reports that all electrical systems are in good shape. Columbia is now 50 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 40 miles now traveling 3,200 miles per hour. Voice of Kyle Herring, those approaching numbers. Uh, three minutes into the flight. Uh, the next call will be uh, shortly after three minutes, which will be a two-engine call for the transatlantic abort site at Ben Gurir in Morocco. Again, all systems healthy, the hydraulic systems, electrical systems, and the three engines are, are all at full throttle. Uh, no issues that are being tracked. Again, all electrical systems are healthy aboard the orbiter. As we listen to the voice of Kyle Herring, apparently there was some sort of uh, indication that Eileen Collins called out shortly bed. after liftoff, which Columbia indicated... Uh, Columbia can reach Ben Greer now in the event of a single engine failure. Again, all three are still at full throttle, and uh, there are no issues uh, being reported by the flight control team. All is quiet. It appears uh, that the electrical uh, issue earlier on appears to have been a sensor. All systems are, again, healthy. Columbia is 116 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 58 miles, traveling now almost 4,500 miles per hour. Now, those fuel cells are critical because the fuel cells are what operate the hydraulic Columbia, systems on the space return. shuttle. The flight control systems are run by hydraulics. Columbia, Columbia can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center now in the event of an engine failure, but all three, again, uh, are doing uh, very well. So apparently what Eileen Collins had on the first few moments of her ride into space as command commander was essentially a bit of a scare with a sensor, indicating there might have been a problem with the fuel cell, which are the uh, power-producing uh, devices which run the auxiliary power, u power units on the shuttle which run the hydraulic system, which operator system operating uh, normally now, four minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Columbia is uh, 199 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 67 miles, traveling 6,000 miles per hour. And at that point, with Columbia 67 miles high and 7,000 miles an hour in uh, all of four minutes and 58 seconds, let's take a look back at that all launch. It was a beautiful no, uh, sight indeed. T minus 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We have a go for engine start, zero. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia, reaching new heights for women in X-ray astronomy. 
Columbia is in the roll. We've got a fuel cell pH number one. Roger, roll. Hey, Columbia, we're looking at. And there you heard the call from Eileen Collins indicating she had a problem with her fuel cell. Those fuel cells are critical. Anybody who remembers the uh, story of Apollo 13 knows a little something about fuel cells. Essentially what they do is convert liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, create an electrical charge, create power. A byproduct of that particular reaction is water. There's some redundancy in that fuel Columbia system, now fuel down cell system, but it is obviously a very critical uh, system on board the space shuttle for running the hydraulics, the hydraulics in turn running the flight surfaces, uh, which allow uh, okay, Columbia to fly through the atmosphere. Those hydraulics not as critical, of course, once on orbit when they're not using those flight surfaces, those aerodynamic surfaces. Watching this replay, you can't help but be struck by the acceleration and speed which is attained in such short, spirit, uh, short period of time there. Already at 10 miles altitude, 52,000 feet, traveling 2,100 miles an hour. Three engines are back at uh, full throttle. Throttle up is the moment when the shuttle goes through its maximum aerodynamic pressure. The throttles are reduced through that period of time. Once the shuttle gets into the higher atmosphere, where the atmosphere is thinner, the engines are boosted back up to 104% of their capacity, which takes them on their way to orbit. Columbia now has burned more than 2 million pounds of fuel and weighs half of what it did at launch. Uh, and the solid rocket booster separation, which, of course, is a very critical moment in any shuttle launch.